What up, though? It's uh, Ray Covery. Dropping another video for you guys. Um, Ray Covery. So, Ray Covery is based on how I work my program of recovery. My last name is Ray. So, I call my program of recovery Ray Covery. Uh, I'm recovering from homelessness, incarceration, and substance use. So what that means to me is that I do not use drugs, no matter what. I don't commit crimes that will land me in jail. And I keep steady employment so I can keep a roof over me and my family's head. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Recovery. How did I come up with recovery? So, in my early days of recovery, uh, my substance use had sent me to this this new town, and you know I was in treatment, and you know they would take us to outside meetings. Well, it was this one individual, and you know he had, you know, years of sobriety. He had like. 25 27 years of uh recovery and he had this hat he had this hat that said recovery you know and i had a body about six months um of sobriety at the time and i, I see this guy and he, and he got this hat on to say recovery and i'm like hey do you know how can i get a hat like that and he told me you can't you have to recover first so i'm like all right all right Dad, that's cool you know um but who are you to tell me if i'm recovering or not you don't know how much i didn't change in these past six months but anywho you know i kind of left it alone and and the meeting started and this individual started to share i think he was like one of the first ones to share and he came out and he started cussing me out um, you know, to everybody in the group. And this was a very large group, you know, over 100 people. And he came out and he said, this mother ucker, you know, before the meeting asked me how could he get a hat like this, I told the mother ucker he can't get no hat like this until he, your mother ucker start recovering. And I was like, whoa, you know. The conversation went nothing like that. And it really, really pissed me off, and it, and it really, really bothered me. Um, this dude was like my grand, grand sponsor. And so, so I went to my sponsor, and I'm like, hey, you know, like, this dude just, like, cussed me out, you know, in the meeting. And the, and the conversation didn't go nothing like that. And they like, oh, you know, you know, you, you, have, you have to just let him be where he at, you know. And I'm like, f to me, like, that ain't recovery, you know. Uh, I know one of the things, one of the first things that I learned in recovery was to be honest, to be honest in all my affairs. And I didn't look at that like I was being honest. Somebody with, you know, 20 plus years should have that spiritual principle, you know, be working that spiritual principle really well. You know, honesty, that's like the first thing that we learn in recovery is to be honest in all our affairs. And I didn't feel he was honest. So, so I go to my grand sponsor and, and I'm venting to him, telling him how I'm feeling. And basically I get the same thing. Oh, you know, he's been here for years, you know, he can get away with that, you know? And I'm like, no, like, that's not right. So, you know, years go by and truthfully, you know, I need to work on this because it's been years and it's like I'm still holding a resentment to, the, to, to, this, to this individual. Every time I like talk about recovery, it's like, or, or explain where recovery came from, it's like I get upset and I get kind of angry at this guy. And, you know, he probably don't, doesn't have a clue that I'm upset with him, you know. Um, I remember like a few months ago, 
you know, me and my wife were having some issues with our marriage and I, I called up, you know, somebody in my network and I was talking to him about it. He was like, man, you know who you need to call? You need to call that dude that you got a resentment against. You know, you need, you need to call him up because, you know, he's been married for a long time and, you know, been in recovery for a long time and maybe he could help you out. And I was like, Dad, like, I do need to call him. You know, I do need to call him and, uh, you know, let him know that, hey, I done got this resentment against you. I've been holding this resentment against you for years. Um, I'm at work, y'all. I, like, I just pulled up at the job, and I was like, you know what? Let me drop a quick video, because I was thinking about this on my way to work. And I really wanted to talk about something else. You know, I, it just went there. Um, I had a few minutes before I had to actually go into the job, so I thought I would drop y'all a quick video about uh, really I was going to talk about alcoholism uh, and AA meetings Alcoholics Anonymous meetings but um, I don't know we started talking about I decided to talk about recovery so so yeah so once I once I you know started recovering you know I, I told myself that hey that's gonna be my name, Ray Covery. And I got some goals and you know, one of my one of one of my goals is to open up a recovery community. Um several houses, you know, in the neighborhood that's strictly just deemed to people trying to recover, trying to recover. And and you know, whatever you're recovering from, you know. If it's, if it's cancer, if it's substance use, if it's homelessness, if it's incarceration, um, if it's uh, spousal abuse, you know, whatever you're recovering from, you know, recovery can help. You know, that's, that's the ultimate plan and that's the ultimate goal. But, um, you know, I thank God for that individual, you know. He kind of sparked something in me. He let me know that, hey, that I ain't perfect and I still have things to work on myself. Um, AA. Let, let, me, let, me, let me talk about AA for a minute because that's originally why I came on here and, and what I wanted to talk about was uh, alcoholism and, you know, and Alcoholics Anonymous. So... For a long time, I never thought that I had a problem with alcohol. I thought it was just the dope. And the reason I thought that because I never faced any consequences from my drinking. I never got in trouble for drinking. You know, I ain't never had a, a, a DUI. Uh, I never had an accident. Um, alcohol really never caused no problems in my life. So I thought. Because, uh... I started thinking back on the times I used to drink and some of the things I used to do. And I most definitely had a problem with alcohol. I just never really faced any major consequences from my drinking. Cause I started, I started thinking back and I was like, you used to do some crazy stuff. You know, I can remember one time and I used to work as a elect, electrical, electrician, uh, electrical apprentice. And, you know, I was in school. I was going to become an electrician um, after I got out of prison. And uh, I would go to my job, and, I would, and I, would, I would come to work reeking of alcohol because I had drank all night. And I would get to work, and around this one particular day, it was like around lunchtime. And I remember I, I, I told my, uh, my boss, I was like, hey, at lunchtime, I'm going to the bar. You know, the strip club, I'm going to the bar. Do you want to go? And he was like, no. I was like, well, I'm leaving at lunchtime. I'm going to the bar, and I ain't coming back. You know, and he was like, okay, whatever. You know, that's on you. You know, if you don't want to get this money, then that's on you. And and the thing was that I, I just wasn't, you know, hurting me. I was trying to take other, other people with me because I was like, you know, I was going around recruiting people. Hey, you want to go to the bar with me? I'm leaving at lunchtime. Y'all want to go to the bar? I'm going to the strip club, you know? And people were looking at me like, I'm crazy, but I'm thinking I'm totally sane. Like, it's okay to take off work early, you know, on a Friday and go to the strip club and get drunk. So I leave work at lunchtime and 
I go to the strip club and I'm drinking and I'm drinking and I'm drinking to the point where I find myself like nodding out inside the strip club, you know. And, and where I'm at this particular club, you know, it opened up at lunchtime. So I'm like one of the first ones there. And uh, I find myself, you know, getting drunk and I was like, you know what, like I gotta leave. And I go out to my car and I get in my car and I black out. I wake up and the sun is going down and an individual was walking up to me. Right when I woke up, an individual was walking up to me and he was like, I was just about to rob you. You know, you woke up right on time. You know, and I'm like, car door wide open, you know, one leg hanging out the door, and I'm like passed out. And he was like, I was just about to rob you. And I was like, oh my God. And I got my car and I drove it as fast as it possibly can go. And I got to my girlfriend's house. And I remember like, as soon as she opened the door, I, like I smiled and bam, like this fell on the floor. And I woke up the next morning, like not knowing where I was at, but you know, I was safe. I was, I was in her bed and I woke up and looking around me and wasn't nobody there. She had stole my car, but, um, that was just, you know, one story. And one thing that made me realize that I had a problem with alcohol, uh, I can remember like getting up first thing in the morning, having a drink and my friends looking at me like, dude, like you ain't brush your teeth. You ain't had nothing to eat. Like you just wake up in the morning drinking. And I'm like, what you talking about? Like the party ain't over. Like we still partying. Like what's up this drink, you know? And, and this was the individual who I thought was an alcoholic. And, and I remember when somebody told me, they was like, you know, you got a problem when the people you think they got a problem looking at you like you got a problem. And <clears throat> I, I heard that, I heard that in the meeting. I was like, damn, like maybe I do got a problem. Um, I can remember like picking up my girlfriend from work drunk and she not wanting to go back to my house. She want me to take her home because I'm drunk. And she's telling me like, she's scared of me, you know? Recovery, I don't like you when you drunk. I don't like you when you're drinking. Like, you scare me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I ain't never abused you. I ain't never put my hands on you. Like, I ain't gonna hurt you. What are you talking about? And she was like, no. Like, I'm scared of you. And, you know, totally mind-blowing to me because I know I would never put my hand on her, but my alcohol made me act a certain way and people feared me, you know, and I didn't even realize that I was like this scary dude to people, you know. So, that's how I came to realize that I had a problem with alcohol. And it took me years to realize that because, like I said, I always thought it was just about the dope. I always thought I just had a problem with dope. Uh, never the alcohol. Um, I recently just started going back to AA meetings, Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. Um, my recovery process really, really started. when I, Once I really, really started recovering, I recovered through Narcotics Anonymous. A um, bunch of stuff, though, I learned along the way because, like I said, I think I, think I originally, like, the court system sent me to uh, IOP, Intensive Outpatient Program, and, and I would go to meetings there, and it was like a wide range of recovery. I mean, I had this one dude, I remember he was telling me he was, he was a sex addict, and he was recovering from that. Uh, so it was it was IOP intensive outpatient. It was celebrate recovery. It was AA. It was uh, 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 NA Narcotics Anonymous. But uh, I started off going to Alcoholics Anonymous, and then eventually I converted to Narcotics Anonymous. And you know I like the individuals in uh, uh, Narcotics Anonymous. The material was easier to read and understand for me. So uh, I took a liking to Narcotics Anonymous and I started to recover, you know. Uh, just recently, though, I started going back to Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, kind of like what was more convenient for me, 
You know, it was more convenient for me to go to Alcoholic, Alcoholics Anonymous and the situation I'm in right now. And I started going and I started getting an even deeper and better understanding of the recovery program and the recovery process uh, in general. And it took my recovery to a whole nother level. Um, I know, those of y'all who don't know, like, Narcotics Anonymous really was like a branch off of Alcoholics Anonymous. Alcoholics Anonymous was first, and then Narcotics Anonymous came along some years later. But it's basically based off of Alcoholics Anonymous. And I'm going to these AA meetings now, and we're reading literature and we're reading material. And it's so similar to Narcotics Anonymous. Some of the things I am hearing is like, damn, that's where Narcotics Anonymous got that from. Like, I never knew. And, and it's the same, but it's like just worded differently. So I go to AA meetings now. Not to say that I, I don't go to NA meetings because I have a large network of people that I still stay in contact with in Narcotics Anonymous meetings. I just don't attend those meetings as much. Um, AA is like kind of where I'm at right now in this stage of my recovery. Um, so yeah, uh, just wanted to drop y'all a little quick video before I went into the job and, you know, cause I don't know, that was on my mind about, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous and, and how I really never thought I had a problem with alcohol. So I was like, you know what, let me drop, you know, the people a video you know, telling them, you know, kind of like my process. So this is recovery and peace out.